Hello everyone and welcome to this one-off episode talking about data layers, a brand new feature part of Unreal Engine 5. We're going to learn about what data layers are and how they can be used inside Unreal Engine. So let's jump straight in and take a look. So in Unreal Engine 5, world partitioning is a new tool and to enable world partitioning on an existing map such as this one, which isn't world partitioned so far, you have it open and you go to tools and you go down to convert level and it asks you where you want to uh, put it and so we're going to go find the map there it is and I'll open this map okay and we're going to convert in place and click OK wait for that to complete and we'll have it partitioned and then when it's complete you'll get a little dialog box and click OK and you'll get this scene as it is like so. So when it first does this you'll find or you possibly will find that the uh, cells have been unloaded for you. Uh, so we can do go into world partition option here. If you don't have this here you can find it in the window and go to world partition. Okay world partition editor and here you can see the different cells down here. We're just going to select all of this right click load selected cells and there we go there's our now a world partitioned scene so now we're going to use data layers so data layers are the replacement of level streaming because if we go to the levels you can see this is disabled when world partition is enabled so you can't use this so the alternative is data layers which are actually better um, as it gives us a lot more options to do things uh, with regards to how things are loaded up in blueprints and at the start of the game So you enable it by going to the world partition option in your window setting and go to data layers outliner It looks like this So data layer is set up by very similar if you know how to do level system It's very similar to that where you can select different actors so like say these airships. I'm going to click on each one of these Okay, and I want to add these to their own data layer so with them selected, I'm going to go over to my data layers table here, right click and do add selected actors to a new data layer. And there they are. And you probably want to rename this one. So let's rename it. Uh, da, 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 rename. And do airships. Okay. So let me just make this a bit bigger. There we are. So on the data layers thing, you can see your airships here. And we've got visibility so we can hide them, show them. We also got whether or not they're loaded in editor and so if we do that we have to obviously save it um so they're not loaded up in in the game so if you want your editor to start up quicker uh you may also want to say certain certain data layers are not important you can make them load up later rather than when you first start the editor and you do that setting down here in the data layer setting so over here so it says in is initially visible so if you were to start up the editor if this is ticked on then it's going to be visible Okay, if it is initially loaded, then it's going to start up. When you start up Unreal Editor, it will show as it loaded. Now, if you have these turned off, it is going to start up quicker. So something like airships, which aren't important to me developing my scene, I can just turn these off, and my scene will actually load up a lot quicker. And so you can start really optimizing how your level and editing process and workflow um, really do benefit from using data layers. Now, alongside this, we can also change these uh, settings in runtime during the actual game. And you find that in the advanced options, and you go, is runtime, and you tick that box there. So now it's told to listen out for any changes in code. And we can change things like initial runtime state, whether it can be unloaded, loaded, or activated. Activated basically means visible. Um, and we've got debug color there too. So I'm going to say it's unloaded by default, okay? And let's say when I play the game, I'm going to push a key to load it up. So let's go to my player character. Um, there it is. And in here, we're going to make a simple input to enable this data layer. So I'm going to do the one key, for example. And in here, just search for data layer. And you'll get to the data layer subsystem. And then from there, you can get access to various features of the data layer subsystem. So type in data layer again, and there you go. You've got all these different options available for you. So let's say we are going to do um, get, uh, sorry, set data layer runtime state. We do this, 
and plug that in. Now, this requires the data layer itself, what state we want it to be, and is it recursive or not. So, if we tick um, this to be activated, okay, so then we want to get the data layer here. Now, you want to, what you want to do with this is you can promote that to a variable, you know, in data layer, and then hit compile. Now, over here on the right hand side, we can find the in data layer option. We can click on this and we'll find a list of all of our data layers. In this one, we've only got one, so we're going to tick airships. And that's it. Hit compile and save that. So let's close that and let's go and push play in this scene. This scene's not that great, by the way, because it, I think it's really small for your character, but we'll make it work. So I hit play there. And if I hit one, there's my airships. Okay. Hit one again, nothing will happen because they've already loaded. So let's say you want to flip flop that. You can do. And go into our, our character here. We want to check to see if a data layer is already um, activated. So you go data layer, and we're going to get data layer runtime state, and we need to know what data layer, which is our variable. And in here, we're going to do uh, select. And oh, and the we're going to make the select index be checking if this is equal to activated. So if it is already activated and it's true, we're going to make it go to unloaded. If it is uh, false, we're going to make it activated. So now it should toggle off and on. And I hit the one key. So it is unloading them, so be aware that if you do unload it, then it's going to basically restart whatever actions they are doing. So for example, you can see over there that one that's moving, if I hit the one key and make it one again, it will restart its pathing in the distance there. So there we see we've got data layers, and obviously you can make more of them. Um, over here on the right, we can just go and add this building here, add new layer, and likewise, we can unload and load those really uh, you can also make sub uh, layers as well inside of each other make groups so if I right click on this one uh, we can create new data layer under this one so now it's a group of them and so I can say okay this one's a building but this one is say uh, this building in particular and create uh, sorry add selected layer, uh, actors to new data layer Oh, not that one, sorry. To data layer one. Uh, yep. Okay, so I can hide. Oh, got the whole layer there. To hide the whole lot. And. Is it not selected that? Let me show that again. Maybe because I've made that inside of there. Okay, I need to remove that one there. There we go. So, yeah, beware if you do add it to two. Uh, data layers it will only go into the top one there okay um but there you go data layers pretty cool pretty useful check them out and uh yeah have fun and there you go we've now got data layers under wraps we are confident in using them in our games if you like this video and want to see more Unreal 5 content, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where your donations help me keep the channel alive and you get to see bonus content before anyone else. As a thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribed and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.